Hey there, my name is Ruben, founder of Man and Myth, and today I want to take you through the boy crisis, where I will describe to you a chain of events that is self-perpetuating, because a boy raised without a father will eventually leave a family himself, allowing yet another boy to be raised without a father. And in this way, we are allowing to cripple our society from the inside out. And the main purpose of this video is so you can engage in deepening dialogues and increase your understanding of the dynamics at play. I want you to harmonize the relationship and balance between men and women so that we together as men and women can offer a profound foundation for the younger generations to grow up in so that we can actually start healing the family and increasing the cohesion and harmony in our world. Let's now dive into the boy crisis and find out what it's all about. I want to share something with you about the background of the boy crisis, because I believe that it's really important to get a good grip on this. The historical precedence was that men were actually more of the providers and were more in their power and women were more in their sensitivity. And after the Second World War and the rise of the women's movement, we see that women are now, in general, more inclined to be independent and strong. And many have a desire to pursue a career. And so we see from a neo-Jungian perspective that women move more towards their warrior. Instead of equality, it seems that feminism has brought about a shift in the archetypes men are now more in their sensitive side, their flowing side, their feminine side, generally speaking. And women are now more into their power, into their independency. As a result, we see that many men are actually left disempowered and incapable to provide for their family. And this has slowly created a chain of events that leaves young men and boys utterly lost and directionless. It's actually a very sad phenomenon. It may be that these struggles and issues of our current day and age will be the springboard in which we will transform into the next paradigm. What this next paradigm will look like exactly is still not clear to me. Okay, so now that you know more about the background of the boy crisis, I want to take a look at the specifics so that you know what the recurring themes are and what the boy crisis is made of. Warren Farrell and John Gray co-authored the incredible book, The Boy Crisis, and they describe how we live in a world where men are often left out in raising children completely. Most women, according to Farrell, tend to be rather scared of daddy's somewhat rough approach to parenting, and it's rather common for fathers they feel they are allowed to parent, but only if he meets the special conditions the mother sets. This leads many fathers to become an emotionally absent, resentful, and a silent unhappiness can settle in his soul. Other men may look for work to find fulfillment in a search of purpose that will allow him to live a life of meaning. But the dubious situation arises that a woman will feel emotionally disconnected from her man and will shield him more and more away from interacting with their children. This leads many fathers to feel like their only purpose is to generate income for the family, but that lands them straight into feeling empty and unhappy, since he is essentially disconnected from most love in his life. Furthermore, many women today, due to the increasing empowerment of women, they're actually able to provide for themselves and they won't actually need a man as the breadwinner. And thus many men find themselves without a purpose. But the situation is worse because due to dad absenteeism or the absence of the father, be it emotional or physical, children suffer from all kinds of unhealthy side effects like anxiety, depression, ADHD, and they can even have an increased chance of developing autism when growing up. Because suicide rates skyrocket in comparison to that of girls at the age of around 16. And in adolescence, it's the boys who find themselves unable to launch. They sink into addictions, they feel utterly directionless, and often carry an extreme distrust of the goodness of men, authority, their masculine identity, and their father. Because they see their father as a loser or as an evil man, and they decide they never want to be as wicked as dad. 
without the father as an image to strive towards, the young men are unable to hook their imagination, excitement and honor into a vision for the future. It's as if they see the future and they actually hate what they find. Sons need to see their father, to learn the skills he has and to physically interact with him during play or activities, so as to learn about boundaries and acquire essential competencies. Very often in situations like this, and in particular in divorce, the mother has a tendency to badmouth the father and poison her son's mind against him, and generally convinces the boy that the world of men is not to be trusted. The son has no other option than to bond to his mother, and something quite unhealthy starts to happen. If this is the case for you, then know it's the task of men to help your son transition from the world of mother to the world of father. And without this guidance, a young man may find himself out of touch with his desires and utterly lost. He will often have to fall back on you while he is growing up. The increasing demonization of men has young men increasingly disheartened and many students fall prey to the insidious liberal poisoning of men, and especially white men. They do not know anymore why they should work or study in the first place, because women seem to have covered all the gates to begin with. The man may find himself not really liking his future all that much. Add to that a bad father image and the idea that the sons never want to become like that, he basically castrates himself right then and there. As such, women outperform men on the job market and are, as it stands right now, more likely to establish and maintain healthy and strong relationships than men. With the benefit of court, many women get to keep their children upon entering a divorce, and men are liable to pay alimony, even while many are far of worse than the women to begin with. Many women are somewhat resentful of having to deal with what they perceive as such weak men. The main point I'm here to make is about the consequences of the cycle of fathers' homes. Our sons are becoming less and less educated and ironically our daughters increasingly desire partners who are more educated, taking into account the decreased competency to deal with life in general, be it emotions, responsibilities and relationships, and the alarming decrease in men's education, Warren Farrell describes what he calls the dropout left out cycle. Okay, so let me take you through the dropout left out cycle real quick. It's a basic premise of that boys underachieve at school and basically either drop out or underperform and underachieve, which leads them to eventually underperform and underachieve at the marketplace and become very undesirable for women later in marriage and husbanding. And so when a couple has children or decides to have children at all, it turns out that the mother finds herself with another child for a husband and quite often just decides to do it alone after potentially a lot of friction. What happens then is that the family is left yet again without a father. And so the cycle simply perpetuates itself. What we're looking at is a chain of events that will cripple families, communities and eventually cultures. With the increasing viability of the multi-option female children career both, men increasingly fail to find purpose in being the sole breadwinner and they face a psycho-emotional brick wall of cultural prejudice and derision and shame in being a full-time dad. With wars becoming less of a requirement and more of an optional path, many men fall into something called a purpose void and they sink into misery and addictions. Being told to tough it up is but one of the common social bribes that men have to deal with, which in the end results in a staggering rate of global depression and suicide. In many of the tragic mass shootings, research has shown that the culprits often came from broken families with absent dads. The same is now suggested for men joining extremist groups, which provide them the hierarchy and structure and direction they desperately craved. Our young men are often recruited by gangs and other groups that have a strict code of conduct with a collective mission. Farrell actually says that prisons have basically become institutes of debt-deprived boys.
that men are doing bad is fortunately becoming increasingly accepted and acknowledged. Influential people like Warren Farrell, Michael Gurion, and of course the controversial Jordan B. Peterson bring the struggles men face to the forefront but are often ridiculed and even hated for it. Even with Jordan B. Peterson's analytical brilliance and dialectic prowess, Peterson has been the target of much animosity and ridicule, but a little research tells me that he voices the concerns and desires of an incredibly huge male audience who in him see the dad they never had. In order for us to raise responsible adults, we need to make sure our families are secure and solid. When raised in a fatherless family, young men typically tend to fall behind in parenting or get left out completely themselves when trying to provide for their own family. Not only do boys and adolescents perform statistically worse than girls and women on all fronts, they are less equipped to deal with life, relationships and responsibilities because they missed a masculine role model that helped them feel secure in themselves and showed them the proper ways of manhood. And with a wave of men feeling misunderstood, many are hiding in destructive habits such as addictions. And if left unguided, they will act out their repressed emotions and hurt not only their environment but also themselves. By leaving this crisis unattended and neglected, men will continue to rot away in their purpose void and will insidiously destroy our society from the inside out by acting out violently. We will set our children up for failure because of our inadequate parenting and crippling dad absenteeism. Ultimately, it's about your children, without whom we have no future. And without us supporting them in becoming responsible and wholehearted adults, they will have no future either. So now that you know a bit more about the boy crisis, where it comes from and what the recurring themes are, I hope that you find yourself inspired to engage in genuine, ongoing, deepening dialogue that I believe will start to heal the discrepancies and the distance between the masculine and the feminine. And I hope that this will then allow the creation of, of a profound foundation for the future so that our children can grow up in safety and with a nurturing family. Thank you so much for watching. You can start to heal the family and your community right now by creating a better understanding of the situation that you're facing and by engaging in genuine dialogue on the challenges and opportunities that arise in your life.